Welcome to the Intune Guitar Academy. Today we have a special guest. He's appeared several times on the Intune Guitar Academy. Uh, Kelster Von Schredster, also known as Kelly Coglin. Coglin, yep. We're at his house and we're trying out the new Epiphone, well, new to him. It's a 2013 Epiphone Sheraton, Sheraton Pro 2. two. So Just a two, not it, a pro. It's a uh, semi-hollow body, yep. arch top. Center block to keep the feedback minimum. And the arch top means that the body is tapered up by, uh, upwards. So we'll have a, we'll do a close up view of that. That is perfect. Just like taper it down like that. Like and that. then you can see kind of a shape like a violin. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, the shape that it, that's where the term um, arch top comes from. So and it's kind of a shape like a lovely violin. headstock. And the headstock is typical of Epiphone. And really nice fret inlays that I don't believe you get on the modern ones so the 2013 so one to get and it's uh, 24 and three quarter inch scale length so it's kind of on the shorter end it's got the typical epiphone headstock and uh, with the nice tree of life uh, design epiphone has been around for 140 years uh, we're recording this video in 2023 so this year is the 140th anniversary of epiphone it was a company uh, that was launched by Greek immigrants to the United States. They immigrated to New York City and they launched the company Epiphone. And since the 50s, they've been part of the Gibson wow. Corporation. So that's why there's a lot of um, commonalities between the Gibson lineup and the Epiphone lineup. Uh, Epiphone tends to be more of the budget friendly line. It's very similar to like Squire and Fender. Squire is uh, the budget friendly. And the Squire came about, Fender was trying to uh, take away the competition from all the Japanese companies trying to knock off the Fender brands. So they came out with Squire to be the budget friendly line. So Epiphone is kind of the same thing in terms of Gibson. But Epiphone makes great guitars. Uh, Mike, of uh, Mike and the Mechanics, um, what's his last? Um, drawing a blank, Mike Rutherford from Mike and the Mechanics and the, also from Genesis uses Epiphone, uh, Squire on, on stage and Epiphone had been the, the uh, choice guitar for the Edge and Epiphone has also been known for the Beatles used the Casino so George Harrison and John Lennon and also from time to time Paul McCartney John Lee Hooker uh, was um, his go-to guitar was the Sheridan or uh, the Epiphone. I don't know if he used the the, uh, the Sheridan, but he definitely used the Epiphone and uh, the, edge, the Edge from uh, from the YouTube. So I YouTube. Mean, e Epiphone has a great lineup of guitars. So enough for me. Uh, let uh, Kelly uh, take it over. And well, what are your impressions of this guitar? Yeah. So here's the little bit of a story. I'll keep it short. Um, I had a Gretsch. Uh, actually, I've been going through a Gretsch journey. Um, started with an Electromatic, which is the second level in four levels of quality for Gretsch. Anyways, uh, that led me to a cheaper Gretsch and then a much more expensive made in Japan Gretsch. And then I sold that, got another Electromatic Gretsch. But at the end of the day, the Electromatics, um, they just have this cheap feel. And um, I'm kind of known to dabble in, in, you know, pretty good quality gear. and. I just didn't like the feel. It had a cheap toy, toy feel. It's the only way I can describe it. So I traded the Gretsch uh, about a week ago uh, with this guy for this Epiphone. Now I used to have a Gibson 335 that looked actually exactly like this, except it had a Gibson headstock. And I ended up selling that to fund my Gibson custom shop. And uh, I've been missing my 335 since then, and truthfully, the Gretsch was not filling that hole, even though it was a semi-hollow, it had a center block, it had F holes, uh, it just wasn't scratching the, the 335 itch. So, as soon as I saw this, I met the guy in, in Canada, and uh, in front of the Tim Hortons on March Road, and I, I just knew immediately from feeling the neck, I knew this was a superior guitar, like much, much better made. And then I came home, plugged it in. I was not disappointed. Um, I do plan on replacing the pickups and I will show you why shortly. What we're gonna do is you're gonna hear the Gibson custom buckers, which are 
super, super close um, replica of the classic uh, 59 PAFs. Um, these are the, uh, what were they called, Frank? These pickups again? Pro, uh, they're not Pro Buckers or uh, something? Epi Bucker or something like that. They right? are Epiphone pickups. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. I, yeah, Pro Buckers, you're right. That's, pro Buckers. Yeah. They're not bad at all, and I'm going to shut up, and without further ado, I'm plugged into a Fender Pro Reverb reissue. I'm going through an exotic effects uh, compressor and a few pedals. Uh, the uh, J-Rocket Archer, which is a clone of the famous Klon. And then we're going to also engage the Dude, which is a Dumble in a pedal overdrive, also by J-Rocket. J-Rocket is my favorite uh, brand of pedals, by the way. They are just fantastic. Then going into a Jam Man Looper, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, Dumble uh, makes great amps. Uh, unfortunately, the, Howard Dumble, yeah. Yeah, the uh, founder of Dumble just passed away. A couple passed weeks away, ago. yeah, a couple months ago. Oh. Last in the last year, let's yeah. just say that. So, so with just the compressor uh, engaged, this is without the compressor, by the way. Actually, it sounded less. That's interesting. And we tried to play your Marshall Plexi, and actually the, the Fender sounds better with this this guitar. To me, it sounds yeah. Better. Having said that, that thing needs to be cranked. Uh, well, it's, and it's not the place to crank. It's not the place. It's a hundred watt hand wired Plexi. What Frank's talking about, and um, and I was running it through an attenuator, so it didn't sound that great with this. Uh, but but I knew this would be a fantastic pairing. Let's not kid ourselves. So, uh, actually the compressor's off right now. So this is the bridge pickup. Here's the middle. Super quick swap now, just so we can compare. Well, I'll call them real PAFs because patent applied for humbuckers. Uh, these pickups alone cost about 700 bucks for the set, not cheap. Um, regarded by many as the best pickups out there. Uh, well, I noticed a little more output overall and a little more clarity. So the the higher output, I think it's it's more due to Les Pauls just having more grunt overall. I call it the Rhino effect. <laughs> You also have an SG. How do you compare the SG to the Les Paul? Well, uh, let's find out. So the SG has the 490T and the 490R Gibson pickups. Uh, they're hot and a lot of people don't like them. Um, I don't mind them, uh, but I'm so used to my Gibson Custom Shop, a super clear and articulate PAS, that I kind of want those pickups in all my Gibson guitars now. But, you know, it sounds good. You'll notice um, not as clear um, as the PAFs. Not as snappy. So that's the 
SG. And of course, SG was the go-to guitar for Tony Iommi and for Angus Young. I love SG's. And Truth be told, that's my most played guitar out of all my guitars. And for a long time, also Carlos Santana, but he's been associated with PRS for many years, so uh, I don't know if he still plays the SG, but every time I see Carlos play, he's always yeah. PRS. Yep, yep. So back to the Sheraton, because this video is all about the Sheraton. <laughs> Now, not a bad sounding guitar, you know, like... So, we're gonna, uh, rock out a bit. Um... pedals are stacked by the way so we might as well make this video about the dude and the uh, archer as well so the J rocket archer has there's two of them there's the silver one and then there's the gold the gold is to me the the closer replica of the famous Klon pedal that now sells for around four to five thousand dollars if you can find one um, they stack beautifully together so so this is clean this is with the archer boost with a little bit of something and then stack with the dude Construction in the field, the bodies burning while the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind. To So, hey, do you want to, uh, do you want to give it a try? No, nah, it's okay. Okay. All right. So, you know, getting back to the, to the Epiphone, I am absolutely thrilled with this guitar. It's got Grover tuners, by the way. So great tuning head, stays in tune. With my eyes closed, it feels like I'm playing a 
real Gibson. Um, Let's get a close up of those two. Right? It's just fantastic, man. This guitar has blown my socks off. They're Grover tuners. You can buy them it's a little bit too close. easily online, anywhere. Okay. Uh, very well known. Near? Super far. solid. Grover? <laughs> Near? Far. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. No, you didn't watch Sesame Street when you were Yeah, <laughs> well, when we did have TV, we didn't have TV in North Africa. Oh. <laughs> All we had was an imam on the TV praying five times a day. It was pretty awesome. That's actually how I learned how to play guitar is because I didn't have TV and we didn't have the internet. We had nothing, no distractions. All I had was a guitar and that's it, me, myself, and I. So now we have no distractions. And this amp, Really good, love it. Fender Pro Reverb, 40 watts, loud as hell. We're only on number two right now on the volume. It's got a beautiful tube uh, uh, tremolo as well. software company here in Ottawa and I sat in my backyard um, with this classical book a progressive learn to play classical guitar and it's something like 40 progressive pieces of classical music from Bach and uh, Vivaldi and all these famous uh... nice. anyways so I started working through them and uh, I still remember some pieces like this <laughs> makes you want to play all day like that's what it's all about and man I never thought being the gear snob that I am that an Epiphone would uh, just really tickle me pink and remember, I'm just tickled I remember, pink. I remember you saying that uh, once you played a telly, a Squire telly and you said that was one of the best tellies you've ever played. Quite possibly, yeah. quite possibly, I don't know. I mean now that we're talking about tellies why don't we take a super quick look at the Jamascus, which is pretty badass as well. 
I played that a couple weeks ago and it uh, sounded pretty decent. And it's pretty friggin' sweet. Twang for days. Especially through a Fender, uh, Fender amp. This is not the right, this, this plug, um, you have to swap it. Whoops. Oh. Whoops. Oh, your <laughs> poor speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys. So let's take that off. Now you definitely want a compressor with a Telecaster. And you want it at least like this. Now I don't know how to chicken pick. I'm a chicken picker wannabe. Chicken picker. setting yeah and it was still uh, in the red it's it's, I, it's, I, it's it's pretty loud but it's not painful my ears aren't bleeding but I'm also half deaf what? so hey. yeah exactly so as you can see this this guitar rocks too absolutely rocks I'm so happy I got it but uh, I digress this was about the Sheraton but it's turned out to be about the dude, the J Rocket Archer, J Mascus Telly, and uh, you know Gibson Custom Shop, Fender Pro Reverb, and um, and uh, this was brought to you by uh, Intune Guitar Academy, and uh, yours truly, Kelster Von Shredster, Gear Gas and Guitarist. Check it out, folks. Awesome. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on the Intune Guitar Academy. Thanks Off for joining us on the Intune Guitar Academy. Cut. Peace. Peace.